So. Uh, what to you makes a film cinematic? What makes a film cinematic is, I think visualizing action is um, the form of cinema. I think that's the purpose of cinema is visualizing action. And, mm -hmm. um, and then what entails inspiring action is just, you know, you have intentions, you have goals, you have everything, right? But if you were to isolate everything, yeah, what makes it cinematic is, you know, it's action. At its core, the more cinematic something is, I would say, is the degree to which you're watching something that can only exclusively come from cinema, you mm -hmm. know. And so, yeah, what makes something more cinematic is the degree to which the idea and the image are one and the same. And so, uh, that's what I would say is. You know, there's images that, you know, you ask yourself, how, what, how many ideas are here, you know? And so, I think that's the ultimate, like, uh, standard for a good <clears throat> director or a good artist. Is, I mean, that and just, like, how do you convey it as, like, simply as possible without any fat and, like, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not, um, not overdo it. Like you said, whatever whatever your your story is, which informs your aesthetic, which should inform your, your shots, you know what I mean? You should yep. kind of have a set of rules for whatever that story is. Right. And maybe right. those rules are really wild if it's a really wild film, or maybe it's a very contained, but you know what I mean? You kind of just have to figure out what are the right answers for this project. And that's the real beauty of cinema, is yeah. you're watching people saw these movies in their heads for you know years. Now there's just a real human passion, there's a real human purpose, there's a real value, there's a real, um, there's a real uh, sense of life that comes from um, this, uh, this thing. And it's really interesting the more you think about it. I mean, I mean it's the most, uh, the argument feels like it's interacting the most yeah. With the world or, or God. Yeah. Because you're having to go out there and take chances and communicate and interact with people. And, uh, yeah. I don't know, it just like leads you down this path where you just like get to this spot and you put this frame in the right place. And then something that was only going to happen at that one second in time that yeah. was leading all the way to get there. And you document that and you go and document the perfect however many seconds, so many times, and you string them together to just make this fluid. Yeah. Crazy story. Yeah. No, you absolutely nailed it. That's... Do you think that, that it's, like, synonymous with, like, what makes a, a great film? Is, like, how cinematic it is, or...? Um, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Um, you know, and how something is cinematic is, you know, varying degrees, you know. What makes Being John Malkovich is one of my favorite films, so I can talk about it very easily. Uh -huh. uh, what makes being John Malkovich so great is you are there. I think a great film, the reason it's great is because you can more or less recreate it very easily in your mind. And that is what makes it so great, is like, you, know, you don't forget. It's a very unique confidence that uh, you see in all the great filmmakers. How, how, how long it takes for somebody to accept an idea, um, and then how you get there, that is very interesting. It's very, like, you know, Jonathan Glazer, he's easy to talk about because he doesn't spend one second other than just, it's just pure, pure meat. You know, it's pure, you know, ABC. And, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a shot in any of, the, any of those, I, I'd say maybe there's maybe maybe there's shots. I'd say there's maybe yeah shots in Birth and Sexy Beast that you don't know what you're looking at at first, uh -huh. and then it slowly comes in. You're like, oh my god, and, yeah. But like under the skin, zone of interest, every second, you're never like, you know, what am I seeing? It is just so simple. It's even though the, the entire family. opening is like, what am I seeing for the first like few yeah. minutes before you realize this is not a coffee cup, it's a 
eyeball. Yeah. Beautiful opening. It was just very. That one mental. perfectly uh, illustrates what I was going to say before that, and that when a film is like that perfectly made, it honestly doesn't matter what's happening. It's yeah. if, if I should be afraid of it, or, or if other people watching it are like kind of like, oh, man, that was too much. Yeah. It, um, it like isn't for me if, if the filmmaking is just perfect. You know what I mean? It's just, it's so well made. I'm just have a smile on my face just because of the craft, even though it may be terrifying or something horrible happening. I, I, I would it say. It transcends that if it's such. I would say, um, Jonathan Glazer's style is, um, overwhelmingly masculine if that makes any <laughs> sense I think so yeah I mean it's he, like a stoic or something yeah stoic I guess that's the right word I'm looking for yeah, yeah he's just a, a guy that sits very still every and, time yeah a guy that sits very still oh yeah he's the guy in the room that doesn't have to talk he doesn't have to say anything the real man yeah the most terrifying man in the room is the the quiet ones is the guy who's not talking <laughs> And he's just like, man, I'm gonna make a badass movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> These guys, they have no idea how screwed they are. But you introduced me to sculpting with time, so that's why I just wanted to. Yeah, Tarkovsky, your take on I mean, it. he's just incredible, and uh, you know, it's actually really weird. It's like when you watch his, when you watch one of his films, it's almost like, I don't know. I mean, this is a crazy thing to say, but it's almost like a ghost visits you or something and you feel like yeah. you 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 feel like this i don't know it, it, it's so epic is like how you connect with all these characters and again you know the four by three uh you know aspect ratio you know like this very you know simple way it was very i mean ultimately the restriction is more cinematic you're not afraid to make something explode but also you're not afraid to like frame it and make it you know, as essential as possible. So how about you answer the question now, what sure. What makes a film great? What makes a film great? Yeah, what makes a film great? I just wanted to think about, you know. Um, I don't know, it's, I, I remember being a little kid and uh, there was something, I don't know, I had like the question it's kind of like the basis of this podcast is kind of getting down to like the most simple question, like figuring it out deep down, like getting to it, like, you know, and answering the big, the big artistic, like who stands out among the rest. <laughs> but I remember just like, I don't know, seeing Elvis or seeing Jaws or seeing Star Wars or Batman or something, you know what I mean? And just how uh, iconic they just like stand above the, you know what I mean? It's like, why doesn't something take all of the, the great things, just like study everything and do it better than everybody. Yeah, you know what I mean? Make something bigger. Those, like, are, those are what make the greatest artists to me. Those are all my favorites or feel like the most comp to me of Kubrick and Kurosawa. The, all those guys that just... Kurosawa gave us the great blood spray. Yeah. That was another thing that made me feel like the uh, Macbeth or uh, Joel Cohen one was... Uh, just like wasn't I just watched like Throne of Blood like not too long before that and I was just like God what a sicker version of or I don't know just like that story yeah and I, I probably I mean I probably like the Michael Fassbender I still gotta watch that that one is it's supposed to be really I remember it being like watching it in the theater and it feeling like that like he made every right decision I know the guy that I, I watched so, I watched some of like the trailer and I was like damn and I looked at the guy who directed it I looked at something else that he did but um I need to watch I need to watch this even though I feel like uh Throne of Blood is a better film obviously because Kurosawa is just I mean it feels like it's I watched that and um yeah oh, High and Low it's High and Low is, have, have you seen that? Mm -mm. High Holy and Low Lord, man. Uh, yeah, he's he's like a. Mo it's like the uh, the original uh, uh, the Mel Gibson movie. Uh, uh, Ransom. Ransom. Oh, beautiful. It's, it's Ransom, but done by Akira Sawa. Well, there starring you go. Toshiro Mifune. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, buckle me in. Yeah. So got me wanting to start about um, talking about uh, like great montages or what are like the what are the montages from films that stand out? You were we we had but you. You convinced me to read The Exorcist not too long ago, and I was like, you're like I think it's the best modern book I've ever read, and I, yeah. I have a hard time disagreeing after reading it. Um, 
And then as we were talking about the film too, because I, I read that first and then I watched the film a few days later, which I don't know. It was my first time watching the theatrical cut. I know you said you like the the newer cut, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't know. Watching the theatrical cut for the first time, I was like, "Is this the best?" Well, film I of didn't. All time? I, di- I didn't have a problem with anything until you pointed it out to me. I thought that um, I thought the only thing that was changed and the uh, director's cut was the staircase and um, the ending. I thought that was it. I didn't know that there was... Um, well, the, 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 the crappy VFX uh, faces popping up. Yeah, Pazuzu, whenever... Pazuzu faces. Pazuzu faces popping up whenever she gets scared in the kitchen. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, that kills the mood so hard. Like, I'm so, when you don't have it in there, like, it's like... Honestly, I... Those little I, things interrupt the mood for me. They interrupt the pace for, like, it... It, it also cuts with, with uh, Damien doing the prayer mm-hmm. all the way through, and it immediately, like, cuts into the house. And when you watch, like, where, where they actually... They put another scene in there, and, like, those two cuts together, like, not having that... Um, uh, Man, I think I think the next scene is like him like walking into meter for the first time or something. Mm-hmm. But whatever they were, man, it was so the editing of those two scenes cut together back to back is that's where the magic happens in films for me, I guess, is where yeah. the image to image, what what you chose to have play into each other off like motion to motion. And that that really kind of killed it for me. Was that uh, that cut um the faces the end, it kind of cuts to the girl sitting there, like, listening, you know, the, uh... Well, and here, about, how about help. this? I propose a median cut that uh, will be the addition what, of... What, what was the scene? The ending. Lo- oh, oh, the, uh, the, the, stair, the stairwell shot of them talking a little bit more of, of him. That's what, what Peter Blatty really wanted. That was the whole... And it, yeah, yeah, no, the, the that was the main one that they made. That's what like that's why that cut exists is so Peter Blatty could put that scene back in, The Exorcist, Apocalypse Now, Arts and, of Atlantis, and um, no Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That like oh, it yeah. took me. I'd probably seen them five times, and I loved them every time. And I thought they were masterpieces, but there was something about the last times that I watched each of them. That they, I was like, man, is this like the best film ever made? Like while watching them, mm-hmm. and I hadn't really felt like that. Like I thought they were the, the last few times watching when I watched Exorcist this, this last time because it was my first time watching the original theatrical cut, and I've just grown used to all those little things in the mm-hmm. movie. Watching it like that, and the first time that was, I've always watched it on that crappy DVD too, so it's like DVD quality. So it was like streaming in high def with all that stuff cut out. I was and just having read the book, I was like, this is is this the best film ever made? And like. A hundred percent. Yeah. Whew. Same with the yeah. Same with the book. I re- I'm reading the book and I'm just blown away by the originality of everything. It is. That's like the very unnerving part is how substantive everything like the story is, mm-hmm. like the pace, the pacing, and you know how no character is like there to like lecture or like force something on you. It's you know, and then, and then and then the detective character, uh, which Blatty said was basically him, uh, in uh-huh. some in some way. Like he wanted to be, he wanted like a he wanted like comedy relief or whatever. Yeah, Kinnaman. Kinnaman. Uh, him in the book is just I mean, incredibly written. Yeah. It is how he writes every. I mean, it's. I think I don't. I don't know if he's ever said any more. He about brings it. like some the humanity to the book. He brings the like a uh, little bit of um, <clears throat> like humor to it, or brings the the tone down. This like smothering, dealing with like with this satanic force. Yeah. Well, he. Uh, I think. I think. I think he gets called on a case with humanity. the and and a twenty four hour span. Mm-hmm. The church is desecrated, and then. Um, the right. director is killed. Burt Jennings yeah. is murdered by Reagan. That's it. Happens in twenty. I never hours. noticed. That's like you know what I mean. That's like why she's speaking British sometimes in the film. I never noticed that until after reading the book. There's a lot of little things like that that he does. That's I was gonna say. I think Freakin should be probably like Denny Villeneuve has probably done the best adaptation of a book since 
Friedkin during The Exorcist, in my opinion. Yeah. Because he, uh, he just know like a you know how to synthesize it so well and just make it move but also keep that big tone of it all because even like she walks up to the the astronaut in the movie and you don't know he's an astronaut and you don't know she's like you're gonna die up there yeah and you don't even know he's an astronaut or anything but in the book you know that and there's all those little things that he added in because the book was so huge yeah for all those fans but never explains it, but just it it makes it feel more rich and lived in and like and oh my gosh detailed yeah. than with all those details from the book that he never like Villeneuve like he does so many perfect little things to and gets like he finds ways to condense these giant bits of story and prose that Frank Herbert did into like little moments hidden in different parts of the film to convey the same level of. Yeah, and it's beautiful. It's it's a he has a reverence for the material. It's like Peter Jackson with Lord of the Rings. There's a reverence for the material, and uh, so good. You know, that's what makes an adaptation amazing. Is somebody understands what it is and almost like it's almost like listening to a frequency, like a radio station. It's like it is giving you you're directions. Things out of the air. Yeah, you're like. It's like giving you directions, like how is, to make that. the most essential version, and uh, that energy comes through. This movie, it is, it doesn't hide behind anything. It doesn't hide behind any gimmicks. No. It is a practical Dune, Sandworm, crazy ninja dude, nice hair, chilling, talking to Christopher Walken. Yeah, I, I honestly do. I think it's nothing has made me feel like that uh, intense in the theater besides watching The Passion of the Christ when I was a kid, like on the big screen. Um, just that that heaviness of like having to consider becoming a messiah and just the, the religious tones and how uh, that's one of the things that's uh, so intense about religious like uh, getting getting deep with like looking at God or even like psychedelic experiences are mm. just how it strips away everything and just being in the desert and there's nothing else to do but look at the sand or it's just you're just trapped out there and surviving and all you can consider is what what is going on like with with God or you know what I mean and absolutely out there in the desert I mean, it's how the whole Bible feels so there's so many desert oh it is. Yeah. Desert religions and things that have started from being in the desert and just it being desert psychedelic, people. you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything's stripped away. That's the most intense part about religion is it yeah. becoming like the sole thing and everything else having to be stripped away and it's like meditation or just having to zone in on something and block everything else out. Yeah. I, I, I love the psychology of doing people, you know, having to focus and the energy of like focusing on certain things and like how it affects other people and you know it's very you don't it, it, not misdirection but it's very organic it just kind of you know is so pure uh -huh. it is so not non-pretentious yeah um you're able to understand it it's you know telling something visually you're able to really get to the heart of it and um with the part two it is the most in my opinion, the most successfully visually told film I've seen. That's what makes it, I think, probably the greatest film I've ever seen is that I could watch that movie, no audio, with just a soundtrack, and I yeah, no have no. the exact same experience because I hear the voices in my head. Like, it's that good. It's that good where I could, li I could watch it once and then watch it on mute, and I would hear... My recall yeah. would be so, I would be white noise. I would be a white noise angel delivering Dune audio to other people on the street through my headphones, through me recreating it with my mouth on, a, on, on the street, beatboxing. I, I think that, yeah, that is one of the, the biggest things, again, trying to answer that question of like what makes great films and stuff is the pureness. The pureness not only of like the story or like their intentions or how they're telling the story, but the pureness of the image, the pureness of the sound, like stripping yeah. away everything and going for like, what is the most interesting? What is the most iconic? And what is the best 
sound for this moment for this image you know? absolutely and um, I and I think I think there the thing that I would say uh, with respect to the pureness I would add on to the pureness is integration meaning uh. everything sounds and feels and looks like it's all together like you can't separate it like it's not there's yeah. not one part of the image where it makes you go hey what the fuck is that you know or like you're not watching you know Ryan got I me mean, not 90 I think 90 percent of the films Ryan got me just walking around you know just walking around but like I think that's certainly one of his strongest aspects is everything does feel so integrated and is everything is that top level you know yeah yeah and how he integrates it it's uh it's, he does do the characters, which is just the characters and the photography and the music. He does it all together, and there's no preference for one or the other. He is, you know, like you said, no fat. He's all meat, you know, and uh, it's very incredible. It is a because it, it feels like a he feels like a classic. Or like a film, like an old school, not old school, like, you know, grew up pre-internet, but like old school. It like, is, dude. It's a mix he, between Jaws, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, like Cecil, Romeo and Juliet, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, right. Like his, like, it, like, it, like it's a spectacle and he doesn't refrain from, like, like he, he understands what you're thinking when you're watching it and he plays upon that and it's amazing. And it's completely, it's just not pretentious, which is just so relieving. It's like, I don't have to, you know, excuse what I think or feel in real life to, you know, uh, see another point of view. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I am watching people fight for hope and these simple things. And it's just beautiful. It's bigger, it's bigger than any other film I've seen on that scale. Yeah. It really is, and it's because of the characters. It, the close-ups are just, it reminded me of uh, a Napoleon film in the late 20s. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, beautiful, cool. yeah. where the close-ups are like, they last longer to like make you think something mm -hmm. more than what you're, it, it makes you like almost react. I tried a lot of wild things with that one. Yes. I well, there was not one second well, where it did not visually cohere from one shot to the next, and that is, and then not only that, but it does it without trying to simplify anything. It's mm -hmm. just compelling. It, there's no consideration of like, oh, you know what, we need to make this thing look more like this actor needs more light to make them look prettier. You know, it's just, there's the light, that's all we got, we're fucked, let's do it. <laughs> and shoot it on IMAX and, you know. So you liked it more than the Ridley Scott Napoleon? <laughs> Ridley Scott's Napoleon is the cinematic equivalent of uh, taking uh, Salvio <laughs> in front of people that want to kill you. And uh, then you go, excuse me, I'm going to laugh while y'all stab me. Your uh, dad and I thought the Joaquin performance was pretty hilarious. He was not convincing mm -hmm. as Napoleon. Yeah. And it was really annoying watching him. It was really <laughs> annoying. It was just so <laughs> annoying. I, I love Ridley Scott. You know, you, I, you, have, a good, you have a good POV of it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, at least if you can do Bo's Afraid in the same year, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Bo's Afraid is amazing. Absolutely incredible. That movie is... That was like the first... Felt like... <clears throat> uh, maybe Blackberry, but Bo's Afraid felt like one of the first like great films of the year that I was like, oh, is this the best film of the year? Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Yeah. I definitely think it's, it's up there. I mean, it's probably in the top five for, for 23. Blackberry? Uh, Bo's Afraid. Oh, yeah. Black Area I'd, I'd have in my top ten. I don't know about top five. I don't know, top five. I don't know, what do, what do you think? Like, Zone of Interest. Man. Poor yeah. Things. I mean, yeah, Poor Things. Uh, you know, and Poor Things is very Bo's similar afraid. to The Exorcist. And that it's, like, so human in this very unnerving, innocent way. That 